City of Stevens Point Board of Park Commissioners Meeting, recorded August 3, 2022. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Board of Parks Commissioners for uh, August 3rd, 2022. Director, would you mind calling the roll, please? Absolutely. Freckman? Here. Ledeski? Here. Hall? Here. Alder Keemer? It's on Zoom? Here. Awesome. <laughs> McDonald? Here. O'Connick? Here. Shabilsky? Here. Alder Short? Here. Sorensen? Here. Kerry Wynn is excused. Alder Zerazua? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Excellent. Well, let's move on to agenda item number two and call for an approval of the July 6, 2022 meeting minutes. I move approval. A mo a motion by McDonald. I'll second. Second by Hall. Uh, any questions, comments, or changes that should be made? All right, hearing none. All those in favor of approving the minutes as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Very good. Opposed? All right, thank you very much. All right, moving down to agenda item number number three, which is the approval of usage and financial agreements with UW Stevens Point, Stevens Point Area Public School District, and Pacelli Catholic Schools uh, for Gerke Park Improvement Project, Community Stadium, and the KB Willett Arena. And Dan, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, so there's a pretty lengthy packet of, of the three agreements as well as the exhibits that were included. And what this is now is ultimately a culmination and the legal paperwork for what we've already agreed to in principle through the letter of understanding. So going back to September when we first started the conversations and negotiations, we, we knew that we had to do some things time sensitively, getting them out for bid to be able to achieve some of the deadlines that we have for the athletics. And that's why you see the turf and things going down now. However, the agreement's first in front of the commission at this, at this point. So there are actually the approval processes internally with the three schools and the city has all been done. So everyone from city staff levels and school staff levels are in agreement. And the letter of understanding have gone through those, uh, uh, the extra process too. Where we're at now is the, city, the school board is reviewing it. They've already went through their finance committee. They have it on Monday for the final vote. Uh, the university is up at their legal council. They've performed their review, so it's headed to the chancellor's office. And Pacelli has already told us they're preferred to sign as soon as the council approves this, or uh, we anticipate approval pending this commission's vote and the council in this uh, in later in, in August. So to summarize what we have in front of you is previous to this collaborative effort, we would do annual contracts for each sport with each school. So typically around early summer, we'd send out a written document that would state what dates they'd want for football, and we would charge a la carte for things down to as much as the lights and the individual times they were at the field. Same thing with the ice arena, we charged $160 an hour, and it was like a stopwatch. When you reserved it, you paid for it, and everything was watched really closely. The new agreement, I should say stay too, those were season specific. So we did not have any long-term guarantee and we also had no way of knowing year to year whether or not we'd have those user groups. Where we're at currently and what's in front of you are 15 year commitments from all three schools. The, oper the how they're broke out financially is through an operational pledge, which essentially helps pay for staffing, keeping the lights on, keeping the buildings operating and the facilities, and then the capital pledge for the debt service that the city's taking on. To break them down, UWSP year one would have an $80,000 operational pledge and a $30,000 capital pledge. Over the life of the agreement, that's essentially $450,000 that would go to the debt service for what we're doing borrowing on those improvements. There's a 2.5% basically elevator escalator clause with, with the year-on-year -year inflation that goes on each year. And so right now, as you know, each October is when we look at some fees. Sometimes we go up five, ten dollars This is already built in. That way we don't have to go and address that separately. For Stevens Point Public Schools, they pay $56,000 year one for operational and $22,500 for capital. So that's $337,500 capital commitment over the 15 years. And Pacelli Catholic Schools, because they do not use the ice arena, has a $14,000 operational pledge and $15,000 to capital for a total of $225,000. You'll see that they're basically structured as the heaviest usage is slightly more expensive in addition to size, when you look at the individual sizes of the athletics that are going on there. How does that all break out? If you read the agreements, you'll see that when we were charging a la carte, there was some rules set up in 08 where the second game on turf, because you couldn't do it on grass, went into a separate fund for future replacement of turf. That equated to about 20% of the revenue collected since 2008. The new agreements have that same idea. 20% approximately is going into the future Gerke turf fund or Kirky replacement up project fund so that when we get to the time that this turf is done 
we have some money left over again. This last go around, there was $400,000 that was remaining. So it was good planning by the project team then. In addition, to the capital dollars, as we know, are a, you know, a few million dollars to do everything. So there's some of the operational pledges because there's additional revenue that we, that we were collecting before that's going to help with some of the debt service. Once the debt service is retired, then that'll go into the actual operational budget in whole. The 2.5% escalation or cost of living adjustment or inflationary cost increase is split. 1.25% goes into the operational budget for the comptroller to use for revenue. The other 1.25% goes to the future replacement fund. Again, kind of planning for having some money when we get to that point. There's been several, I'm going to call handshake staff agreements. We walked through the chancellor's box this evening. That's one of them. We had basically worked that out where they did some improvements. They've had access to it, but we've never really written it down. If you get into the university agreement, now we state, we still own it. We have access to it. We can allow you other users to use it with notification. However, uh, it states that they have done the upgrades and it's kind of formalized to show that we have a relationship there. There's been other improvements like locker rooms. So SPASH and the university men's teams or boys teams have upgraded locker rooms and we had standalone agreements. There are exhibits within this. Really formalizing that we're committed to working together. They're still going to maintain the way they took care of those spaces. And then we're adding the UWSP women's uh, program and their locker room upgrade into this project. Going a step further, we talk about how are we going to get them all on a schedule. So one of the biggest questions in this project from the get-go was how do we make everyone able to use these facilities? We went by a priority scheduling order. So before how it worked is we just kind of put people in as they take it because they were buying it individually. Now how it works is the university gives us their dates first. Once the university goes in, on even years we take Pacelli's dates next, on odd years we take Spash's dates next. They go on the calendar. After that it goes to the next school, depending upon the year, high school. After that we go into their middle school programs. Once the schools are cleared, we go to youth football. After the youth football is cleared, we go to youth lacrosse and so on. Then we go down to people that have not pledged or organizations that have not pledged, they pay a fee schedule. These other user groups have pledged and that's what these, these agreements actually are. In a situation where one of the schools says we want to practice and the other school has a competition or an actual game, the game takes precedence. So we know that you know, spectators are coming into the facility, that's precedence, they will put their game competition in our game field. We do know that we're going to have a lot more usage. We're going to probably have games there at the football field, you know, potentially four, if not five days a week now, in comparison to, to usually three before. And we do anticipate a lot more practices there now too, but that's really the whole intent of the agreement. Lights are included now, which is why some of the additional costs were in too. We used to charge every time we turned the lights on. Some of the other agreements that go with this later are youth area football um, and youth lacrosse. Those are much more straightforward. They're really donation subscription agreements and they get to use the field. That's why they're not as elaborate as these. But these get into things like insurance and liability and making sure that we're, uh, we're covering all bases. So the city attorney, once we got to these being in the draft that they're in, helped review them and make sure that they were in the format they needed to be. So what's before the, the park commissioner tonight is staff is recommending approval of these three agreements. In total, it's over a million dollars in capital pledges. Um, it's it's $150,000 minimum year one operational pledges. It really secures us to know that we're gonna have strong partners and strong users for the foreseeable future. And I can tell you there's been a ton of staff time um, from my staff team as well as the three schools. And I think it's a really big step forward for all four to be working together um, as well as the business community that's helped raise you know in excess of a million dollars to help make the project happen. So um, I'm happy to be at this point in the process. We've had a lot of meetings on it, but I do recommend approval and, and I'm happy to answer any questions that go along with the agreements as well. All right. Liz. Um, I just would like to make a comment, uh, Dan, that you've really kept us well informed through this whole process. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any surprises here and uh, it's been communicated very well and I'd like to uh, move approval. A motion by McDonald's. Is there a second? Right here. Second. All right. We'll take um, Mr. Glodowski, second. I guess are there any questions, comments, or any other things for the... I'm trying, John, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yep. Uh, so are there other, any other questions before we move to a vote? I guess one thing, Dan, how do playoffs factor into this as well? Example, what is Spashes in the playoffs and they get a game in, in Gherke? And, and then does that impact calendar and ability to generate additional revenue during the playoff season as well? 
Yeah, so their playoffs are included. So we how we have it set up currently is we've always allowed our home teams to use the field for playoff time. If it's a neutral site game, say it's two other schools, then there's a fee for it. And if both teams get a, a home playoff game, say level one, typically the two athletic directors have worked with the WIA to schedule which one is going to go earlier in the day or which one's going to be on Saturday. So uh, we would have that. And as a, a catch-all, let's say the WIA said you sort it out, we would go back to is it an odd year or an even year, and whichever team had precedence would get to schedule it. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for the director? Otherwise, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the usage and financial agreements between the three entities in the city signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, Dan, thank you for your work. The motion carries. Great. Item number four, director's report. Okay, a couple great news items. We have the Iverson Playground installed. We did run into some rain right as we were about to install things, but it is open as of today. So we just put the notice out. We will have to do a little bit of restoration work, just some grass seeding, which is scheduled to happen. If it wouldn't have rained, it would have been today, but uh, it'll probably be tomorrow or Friday. And then we'll just have some uh, matting that'll be there for, we anticipate there's gonna be children running across this. It's just, it's just the nature of a new playground. But uh, if you get a chance to get down there, it looks great. Uh, that is the one playground project we've had. And when you go into Iverson, if you actually look at it uh, with the board support, we put a brand new restroom in, which is really attention grabbing and people have been really happy about. And now we have a brand new playground feature. So arguably two of the most frequently used items are brand new in that park. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a gem in our, gem in our city and, and those are two really great upgrades. So if you get a chance to go down there, please check it out. The pool season, believe it or not, is coming to an end on August 14th. We're a week earlier this year because of the replastering project. So we have had a good year. The weather's been really nice. So uh, things have gone really well and, and our upgrades the last couple of years have worked out really well as well. But Badger Swim Pools, we've scheduled to begin as early as the 15th. They intend to be there right away because they want to get the, they're gonna, we're gonna drain the small pools. They're gonna start on those right away. It'll take us a couple days to drain the large pool and then they'll still do that one too. And they want to do it before temperatures start dipping in late uh, August heading into September. So well, as soon as we close, it'll probably be about a week and a half to two weeks. Then you'll see that project happen. As you're, if you remember, we actually moved up the big pool within the capital budget. Council and Finance approved that. That originally wasn't going to happen this year. So uh, that'll all be replastered, and we're hoping then that we can start talking about other things like the building, you know, roof, stuff like that going into future capital budgeting processes. So um, aside from that, though, like I said, the pool's been, we've had really good usage. We've, we were able to get Wi-Fi to the pool this year. So our rec desk, or not rec desk, but civic rec system that with the point of sale and credit cards and debit cards, we've had that ability. So that's worked out really well. Um, not listed here, but the Willet, we will be starting ice at the end of this month. So typically right around the last week of August, um, as soon as the uh, Midwest Sisters of Skate have finished up their season. So um, do you know what their last boat date is by chance? 13th, I believe. 13th. I knew it was coming. So 13th. I think that question came up, but the 13th is when that one is happening at the Willet. So um, otherwise, we will be heading towards really the end of our seasonal season. So we'll have, uh, we start losing employees mid to late August for college. Um, and But otherwise, things are really rolling really nice. Uh, we went through the report of Riverfront Rendezvous last month. Uh, I will tell you, we're working through the band shell kind of upgrades and repairs. So staff had to submit their capital budget requests about two weeks ago and now we'll be doing the staff meetings with the mayor and the comptroller's office i hope to bring a, a better report to the commission uh, next month on that potentially really our capital requests come down to necessity so the willet roof the band shell repairs and then we also have the cash playground surfacing i think this may end up being one of our tours we do get this year it's just at the end of its life so it's been there for 15 16 years and it's it's been peeling we've been patching it so that request is into just because of the heavy use uh, that's really a necessity. So those are the three priority ones that I rank for next year, but I'll give you a more kind of breakdown for that next month, hopefully. So, um, I also should share, just so everyone knows, I'm actually going on a, on a trip, a hunting trip next month, so I'll be out of state in Idaho. Uh, so it may be, I might have to either move the date, which I'll work out via email with everyone, or it might end up being, depending upon the agenda, um, I might have Todd stand in for me. So it just happened to fall there. So that's how it's gonna work out. <laughs> that's all I have. Yeah. Questions for the director? All right, moving on to agenda item number five, adjournment. I'll motion, entertain a motion to adjourn. O'Connick? Second? <laughs> second. <laughs> second. No second. No second. Second. Come on. The motion failed for the lack of a second. The commission remains. <laughs> all right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you everybody, Thanks have a everyone. wonderful night.
A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com videos.